as we prepare to worship the Lord. to set aside the worries and the cares of the world. Help us to open our ears and our eyes and our hearts so that we may fully, completely, and totally worship you in this place at this time. We ask that the Holy Spirit put a hedge of protection around us so that we might not be distracted, and we might not be confused. Be with us in this place, we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please turn to number 56 in the blue hymnals. And this morning we will be singing verses 5 and 6. In Would you like to go ring the bell? I'll do it. Lorenzo wants to ring the bell. I'll do it. We get such elementary joy ringing the bell. <laughs> this is only the second church that I have been at where there has been a bell to ring. So, it's a joy. And it rings out across the valley. You can't hear it much in here, but outside of here, it's loud. It's letting, you know it's letting folks know that we are here. And we're starting. Please stand. Verses 5 and 6. Page 319. 
in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Page 319. <clears throat> in the middle of the page. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. Is mercy and Turning to page 317. If you are able, please kneel. Three seventeen at the bottom of the page. Please kneel if you can. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts. We beseech thee. At the bottom of page 319. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs> the Apostle John wrote, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The writer to the Hebrews adds, Seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. <clears throat> Let's spend a moment or two in personal confession and reflection before we continue with our public corporate confession. Page 
absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Page 324. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy, immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy, immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Let us pray. <coughs> Stir up thy power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let thy bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the lighting of the Advent candle and the reading of the God's Word. Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The reading can be found in your online bulletin or your personal Bible. A reading from Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful, fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground of springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 146, verses 4 through 9. The psalm is found on page 803 in the Book of Common Prayer and your online bulletin. Let us pray Psalm 146, verses 4 through 9, responsibly by a whole verse. I will begin. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger? The Lord sets the prison free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are hungry. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Our second lesson comes from the letter of James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 10. The reading can be found on your online bulletin or your personal Bible. A reading from James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may be not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. 
As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you are able, please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with him for me. Almighty God, may the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable to you. May only your words be spoken and your words heard. In this we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated and can I get the young ones to come on down? Do 
You know what takes place in about two weeks? China. China. <laughs> Let's not hope China takes place in two weeks. All right? China could take place in two weeks. They're big enough, right? No. They could, but we're not, but that's not what we're talking about. Christmas! Christmas happens in two weeks. Did you realize that? <laughs> you know what? That's a right response. Yeah, you think Christmas is happening, right? Are you waiting patiently for Christmas? No. Are you waiting patiently for Christmas? No. Are you waiting patiently for Christmas? No. Thank you, an honest woman who's like, oh no, I am not waiting patiently. I want it here now. Don't you want Christmas to come? <laughs> Yeah, you want, don't you want Christmas? Right, I know, yeah, see, that's it, right there. Right? Christmas is coming to Right? That's what we're looking for. Okay? We're really excited about that, but we have to be patient. We have to wait. The better off you are in waiting, the easier your life will be. Hello? Are you excited about Christmas coming? Yeah. Are you waiting patiently for it? Yeah. No. Yes? All right? So, our lesson today is one on patience. Okay? Things happen at their own pace and in their own time. As much as we'd like to think we can speed stuff along so it happens faster, more often than not, the faster. They're going to get stuck and they don't happen the way we want them to because we don't allow them the time. Okay? So if we are able to wait patiently, when it finally does happen, we are really prepared for it. If we take the time to prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus, if we think about what that means, if we think about the gifts that he gives us, and we really, really wait and be still. Not thinking about all the stuff that's underneath the tree, but thinking about the person for whom the day is actually named after. Christmas is Christ's mass. That's what it means. When we wait patiently for him, when he finally does show up, it will be a marvelous thing. When the day happens, we can appreciate it better. So, take a step back, take a deep breath. Whenever you feel that anxious, it's like, wait, wait, what's happening? I'm going to sit and I'm going to remember that without Christ, there would be no Christmas. So that's what we want to celebrate. Yes, sir. Christmas is not about presents, it's about family. Right on, right here. Give me a high five. Boom. Yes. Uh, why, why do you need to do like a sit right next to the tree all day long, all day long tomorrow, all day long with another day?
And you know what that makes them? That makes them patient, and it makes them appreciate just a little bit more what family gets to share together and worship together. So, patience, calm myself, and let us pray. Wait.
their hand in front of their face. There are people who are out there today who are looking at the world around them and do not see the thumbprint, the hand of God in all of creation. Who do not see that the catastrophes that they are in are of their own making and want to blame everybody else for their problems. They are indeed blind. When this Messiah comes, the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. How many out there have heard the good word and the good news of salvation of a life in Jesus and yet refuse to hear? How many out there how many in here refuse to hear the value of confession, of repentance, of forgiveness? Oh, your lips are moving, but I can't hear what you are saying. Because I've closed my ears to only hear what I want to hear. I'm only surrounding myself with people who are saying what I want them to be said. Are they, are we not deaf to the good news of Jesus? How many of us are lame in not taking and walking that extra step to help those who are in need? who won't reach out our hand to assist, not doing what we need to do. When the Messiah comes, then the tongue of the speechless will sing for joy. When the Messiah comes, then those who know the good news will be emboldened and empowered to share that good news, that cure for what ills the world. But how many of us are absolutely mute when it comes to speaking God's truth into a world that needs to hear it? We don't now for the same reason that they did then. There was a great amount of fear in the world. There was a great amount of oppression in the world. There was a great amount of persecution in the world. And because of our fear of that, rather than our trust in God, that they didn't say, they didn't do, they didn't speak, they didn't see. As we know it today. But when the Messiah comes, we're going to watch him, we're going to see him, we will follow him, because he's going to make all of those other problems disappear, and we're not going to have to, because he's going to do it for us, because he's going to ride in with vengeance on a great horse with a huge army, and he's going to slay all of our problems. Isn't that the kind of Messiah we want? Somebody better give me an amen. We do. That was the Messiah that John the Baptizer was looking for. John the Baptizer had read all of this, had remembered all of this, had even encountered some of this in the womb when Elizabeth and Mary got together and the babies were doing somersaults, causing all kinds of internal gastral distress in their mothers. Right? They knew something special was going on in the womb. But now John is questioning. John wants to know, hey, are you the one? John's in prison at this point. 
John was the greatest of the Old Testament prophets because of him it was told to prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah. Man, that must have been huge. That must have been huge. He was following in the footsteps of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amos, Hosea. All of these guys who are all pointing to Jesus. But he also had all of their old ideas of what the Messiah should be doing even running around in his head. So when he asks, You the one? He's in prison. The reason that he's in prison is because he wasn't afraid to speak the truth to power. Have y'all heard that term before? Uh, it's really powerful in the Me Too movement. Make sure that you speak the truth to power. Don't let anybody take advantage of you. Stand up and say what is actually <coughs> true. No, you cannot do this. These actions are unacceptable. Only the power he was speaking to was the king. The king put him in jail. And their jails were nothing like anything that we've ever seen before. But in jail, his disciples were close enough that they could actually converse with him. They could bring him food. And when his disciples came back and said, you know, there's this Jesus guy running around out there. He's doing some incredible things. John sent his disciples and said, are you the one? Jesus responds, go and tell John what you see and hear. The blind have regained their sight. The people who could no longer see are seeing with a clarity the likes of which they had never had before. The lame walk who had been bedridden for years, for decades, were picking up their mats and going to their new homes. The blind were receiving their sight. People who could see nothing were now seeing the glory and the power and the majesty of the kingdom. The lepers were cleansed. Those folks who had been put out of the synagogue and out of the community were being welcomed back because their physical sins, their spiritual sins, had been washed away. They were indeed cleansed. The deaf could hear. The dead were raised. And the poor had good news brought to them. <coughs> Doesn't that sound exactly like what Isaiah said was going to be? happening when God the Messiah came. <clears throat> that must have given John great joy. Great joy. Because he knew the Messiah was out there. And he had had a part in welcoming him to the world. Jesus is, acknowledges the greatness of John in typical Jesus fashion. As they went away, the disciples went away to go back and share that good news. Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? When you heard this guy was coming, what did you expect to see? A reed shaken in the wind? This is an image of people who live by water and you have reeds and rushes that grow up along the water. Any of you have seen that uh, waves uh, of rain blowing in the wind? They just kind of blow and they wave at you and it feels so good and looks really pretty until a really strong wind comes over. What happens when the strong wind comes over? They fall over, they stay down, and they're good for nothing at that point in time. 
Is that what they went to look out? Was this weed blowing in the wind? No. Did you go out to see someone dressed in soft robes? Was that the kind of prophet that you were looking for? Somebody who was more akin to be one of the high priests, one of the scribes. And we know that John didn't look anything like that. The boy was dressed in camel's hair, really itchy, scratchy, had a leather belt around his waist, probably the minimalists of sandals upon his feet. <coughs> didn't know what a comb or a razor or soap or water looked like. No. What did you go out to see? You went out to see a prophet. Someone whose sole purpose in life was to bring the people back to God. To reconcile the broken with the healer. Yes. That's what you saw. The last of the great prophets. John was the last of the Old Testament prophets. Because of John it had been written, this is the one of whom it had been written, see, I am sending you, sending my messenger, John, ahead of you, Jesus, to prepare your way, Jesus. He is the one that is going out to announce to the world that the kingdom of God was near. Jesus says, Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist. But he was the end of an era. Because the old was passing away. The kingdom of God not only had come near, was near, and standing in front of them. That's who John the Baptist was. That's who Jesus was. He was the kingdom incarnate. God made flesh. And now everyone who follows me will be greater than he in the kingdom. So we have a choice. What are we going to do? How are we going to await? The first advent was about 3,000 years long as they were awaiting the arrival of the king. Our advent's only about four weeks as we celebrate his birth. But we are in a season of advent now while we await his coming again. What are we to do in this time? It goes back to where I first started. Be patient, therefore, beloved until the coming of the Lord. Be patient as the farmers are patient, waiting on the rains, waiting for the crops to grow, waiting for them to mature. Because try as you might, as Joe will tell you, you cannot hurry a crop. It's going to grow when it grows, and it will be ready when it's ready. And Jesus is coming when he comes. But in the meantime, strengthen your hearts in prayer, in worship, in gathering together, in Bible study, in doing good works, in loving your neighbor as yourself. Letting folks know who you are in Christ, so that there is no question that you indeed are a disciple. 
in this day, if it were illegal in this country to be deemed a Christian, would there be enough evidence out there to convict you? Be nice to one another. Don't gossip. Behave as you are disciples. And in doing those things, we are showing them we are patiently awaiting that day which we all pray will come sooner than later. That would be the arrival, the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to take us home. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Turning to page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Let us stand and affirm what we know to be true, as written for us in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. When I ask you, my brothers and sisters, what do you believe? Together, we believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, and the earth and the of all that is seen and us, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who turned to the God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and our salvation, he came out of heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was a living man. For our sake, he was crucified and ostracized. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord of time. Amen. Kneeling, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Daniel and Scott are priests. 
Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may, we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray especially for Joe, our president, and Michelle and Greg, our governors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the services of others, and to serve your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Yes. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Today we pray for Mark, Martin, Harvey, Laura, Diane, Charlotte, Isabel, Gary, Abby, Arden, Ariel, Beverly, Maggie, Joe, Maya, Bob, Jeff, Jenny, Dennis, David, Ciara, Vincent L, Seth, Kayana, Charlie, Pete, Glenn, Jane, Audrey, Estella, and the Reverend Dr. Les Perry. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, we pray for the Moines, emerging congregations in Des Moines, Angel Fire, and Magdalene. We pray for our military, both home and abroad, and all law enforcement, firefighters, and first responders, healthcare professionals, educators, and students. We pray for those affected by violence, brokenness, and all manner of illness and disease around the world. Please add your own intercessions and thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. We pray for those being affected by the severe weather that is sliding across our country, Lord. We pray for warmth and heat and shelter for those who are experiencing homelessness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now and forever. Please stand. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. All right, enough of that piece. Everybody have a seat. Wait. Oh. No. <laughs> no.
not this one. <laughs> a hearty welcome. Um, lots of stuff in the bulletin. Um, just so everyone is clear, yes, we will be having a Christmas Eve service. Yes, there will be. There will be a. Uh, There's a play. There is a play. Mm-hmm. All right. Do we know anything about the play? It's a great play. It's a great play. <laughs> Are you in the process of letting folks know who's going to be in the play? There's two main characters. You and her. And <laughs> <laughs> Say what? <laughs> What are you talking about? Those two main characters know who they are and who oh. are practicing. Okay, good. Um, and and there's I, do need, I do need <laughs> one other person. Actually, I need someone who can put on the Santa suit that we have and just sit in the Santa chair. So if someone wants to volunteer to just, he doesn't have to say anything, oh, he doesn't have to do anything. Oh. Well, he does have to get up at one point and, and kneel down. So he doesn't have to, need to kneel on the ground, but that's a uh, I need one of those, and I need a choir director, leader kind of person that can, like, start a song. Okay, so it sounds like this is a slightly different kind of Oh, it's going to be fun. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Right. And there, there will be places for kids. Um, so if you have grandchildren, children that are visiting friends that are bringing kids to the service, um, It'll be impromptu. Here's your angel costume, you know, kind of thing. No practice, no rehearsal, no nothing. Yeah, that sounds like my kind of play. It's it's awesome awesome. play. Okay. Um, Christmas Eve service on Saturday, 4:30. Early service. We will also have a 9:30 service where we start off as in years past singing carols and what we're going to do this year is between each carol you will be getting a lesson and a little backstory of the carol where did it come from why are we singing it what does it mean and i think and i hope and pray that that will add some depth to the meanings as to why we sing some of the songs that we sing sunday morning 9 30 christmas day we will have Sunday service, Christmas Day service. The following week, New Year's Eve service will be at 4 o'clock because that's the time of our regular Saturday service. And there will be a service, New Year's Eve at 4. And then there will be also a service on New Year's Day, Sunday morning. New Year's Day service will include pancake breakfast, and our fabulous Christmas sweater display. So if you've got one, I'm looking for an upgrade. So if anybody has seen something special that you would like to see your rector in on New Year's Day, this would be the best time to make me aware of your thought process and so I can evaluate my options. And if you know anything about the rector, all the way down to the shiny reindeer shoes, uh, no, we will not change those. Those will be back. Uh, my L shoes, they will be back. Uh, we will also have pancake breakfast that morning as well. Um, the 17th, next, next Saturday? 17th is next Saturday at noon. If you have some free time, please gather at the church. We will be filling our Illuminaria bags on that Saturday. If we have enough folks, it took us about an hour last year. We filled about 300 bags. We put the sand in them, we put the candles in them, and then we store them in a donated stock trailer. So we don't have to worry about that on Christmas Eve. And then early on Christmas Eve day, say about noon o'clock, we will distribute them and put them all around so that during the Christmas Eve service, they will all get lit. Uh, It really looks fabulous when we have luminaria bags starting from in front of the cottage around the church and down both sides of the driveway and up the sidewalks. It's really pretty spectacular. And our luminarias last pretty much all night long. So um, between the services on, on uh, Christmas Eve, uh, we'll be serving for Soleil. 
and we will have festive holiday uh, drinks available in the parish hall. So this is a good time to come and get your Christmas jollies on. Um, so we would invite you. Uh, and cookies. Oh yes, and lots of cookies. We'll have lots of cookies. Uh, cookie exchange. Everybody's got information on the cookie exchange. I still have a couple people to come back. Um, we still have a few angel tree angels out there on the tree. Okay, I think last night we had seven, which isn't bad, seeing as how we started off with forty. But we've got seven left. Um, if you haven't picked one up, or if you want to pick up an extra one, please pick them up, shop, and then bring them back to the church as expeditiously as possible, so that we can get them to the Salvation Army, so they can get them to the kids who are going to, to receive them. And uh, there's some outstanding presents out underneath that tree. Uh, it shows the generosity that uh, this congregation has in the ability to reach out. Um, the gifts need to be returned here by the 14th. We have, we have to get them to the Salvation Army by the 15th. Okay, so if they're here by the 14th, if they're here by the 13th, that gives the manana folks to the 14th to actually get them here. But we've got to deliver them to the Salvation Army. Question? Just like uh, so Wednesday. Yeah, this Wednesday. Week. Wednesday this week. Mm -hmm. This week. Birthdays and anniversaries? <laughs> we'll <see. laughs> We're not busting each other. <laughs> No, but you have friends. You have you have family friends who will. And it was on Facebook, so I was not going to let this pass. Yeah. Yeah. Why is everybody so reticent to have celebrate their birthday? We all have them. I'm fine with it. Are you fine with it? Well, who are you? Sandra Gardner. Everybody say hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. And who are you? Lori Gardner. Everybody say hi, Lori. Lori. And you are in-laws, right? And your birthdays are? No, we're, 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 we're in-laws, but we want each other because we're not outlaws. You're not outlaws. <laughs> You're outlaws. <laughs> you are so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> we want you. Um, and your birthdays are the same day. <laughs> just think yes. about that for just a second. We're going to let that sit in. My there. son was trying to make it easy on himself. <laughs> <laughs> so you were both born on a day that would live in infamy. <laughs> Okay, well, you were. Okay, so how many years has the Lord given you to us that we might be celebrating today? 74. 74, and how many years has the Lord given you? 47. 40. <laughs> That's cool. Is your middle name Sandra? <laughs> The way those numbers line up. God be praised. Let's turn to page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 830. We will do the of prayer 51. Mm -hmm. Okay. Together. Watch over thy children, children, O Lord, Lord as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up and they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace which has this understanding abide all the days of their lives. 
Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for these your servants and children. And ask that you would put a hedge of protection around them so they may not turn to the right or to the left, but always follow where you lead. Pour out your blessings abundantly upon them, we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And a round of applause. Father, man? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Y'all, I got to share uh, something that happened last week. A testimony. A testimony. My, uh, my nephew, Charlie, is on the prayer list, my mom. And my grandniece, Kiana, are all on the prayer, prayer list. And the prayers are working. My mom is getting better. Kiana's uh, recovering from her shoulder uh, surgery. But my nephew, who is fighting demons, fighting those uh, sub substance abuse demons, okay? Last week, I get a call. I know I normally don't answer the phone after 10, but my sister, his aunt, called to tell me, Lorenzo, I gotta share something with you. Charlie called his brother, desperate, saying, can, I, can you help me? I need to go to a church. And in the middle of the night, I need to go pray pray because I'm fighting these demons. So he goes to uh, his brother's house and they go to a church on Montana and it's closed, so the fence is closed. And Charlie was about to give up and his brother said, no, wait, I know of another church. They go to this church and the lights are on and there's people in there and Charlie runs in there and then he comes back for his kids and they go inside and the people get in a circle and they pray for they pray for him because he's fighting the demons of substance abuse. And he wants his kids to be accepted in the kingdom of God and he wants them baptized and all that. It made me cry because God is working miracles. And I'm very happy. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see. Thank you. 
when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and may one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom, with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we do not Thank you. 